you're listening to Tales from Eluthane. May the light of the flame preserve our labors as its power guides our path to liberation. Kiris frowned as he repeated the prayer and added split pine logs to the fire of the Eluthane step kiln. It was now early morning. Tending the flame of the kiln always meant working and praying through the night, and this year the lot had fallen on Hierus and his mother Fulse. May our works carry the light of the flame, so that the darkness cannot overtake them, his mother responded in turn with a repeated mantra. The firing's almost finished, Fosse added after her part in the ritual. It's going to be a good year. Can you feel it, the power in the kiln? Hierus brought his hand near the kiln wall, letting its warmth reflect in his soul. Then, unstopping a window, he looked in to observe the kiln's contents. A smile touched his lips briefly as he watched the scarlet flames of an Eleutheni fire, but his frown returned as he replaced the window's stopper. May the light of the flame provide you with strength wherever you go, he said, offering the required blessing, then sank to the ground to sit next to his mother. Do you wonder, he asked, where our wares go when we sell them? Do you think people can feel the power imparted by the flame? I wonder that, all the time, Fosse said. I like to believe the faith we invest in a piece has some benefit to the people that use it, even if they don't know we made it. Hiroyu sighed. What was on his mind had become near taboo to mention. I, he said, looking up at his mom, and hesitated, not wanting to spoil the peace of the ritual. Hiroyu, what is it? Fosse asked. I know something's bothering you. Do you? His eyes became wet, and his words caught in his throat. Do you think any of our pottery has made it to wherever Moira is? Fosse's hand grabbed her son's robe, and she pulled him against her, wiping his tears as he cried into her shoulder. Oh, my son, she said gently. We think about her often. We all do. It was during a guarding ritual, like tonight, when she gave me the drow book, he said. It weighs on me every year that my translation of it gave her reason to leave. The hint that our creation wasn't as we understood. It's not your fault she left, Hiereus, his mother said as he set up to look at her. We all read your translation, and their lore hasn't been completely unknown to us either. Moira left for her own curiosity, which isn't a sin either. I know, Hiereus said quietly. It's just... If the demon who held our ancestors bound was our creator, I fear so much for her. I find it hard not knowing. I've spent many sleepless nights over it myself, his mother said, rubbing his back. I, he hesitated, looking at his mother. I have to know. I know what she found, where she went, why she won't respond to my sendings. I've decided to leave and find her. There it was, his mother's pained look. He knew it would come when he told her. I... Her frame shook. I won't stop you. Of course I won't. I just... I don't want to lose another child, she sobbed. Hiroyu stood and helped his mother to her feet, embracing her. Trust and benevolence is the path to freedom, he whispered in her ear. May the light of the flame provide you with strength wherever you go, Fosse said, blessing her son. May we again share our labors in the light of the flame, Hiroyu said, as he held his mother tighter, and they both wept. Tales from Eluthane is a podcast by Eric Porter, created as an exploration of my D&D character's culture. The world beyond Eluthane is the primary creation of Benjamin Priest, RDM.